we didn't do any, much, any more math than we needed to to get these questions answered, uh, and then we're all set. Great, talking a little bit about absolute value. So absolute value, you can oftentimes think of it in terms of a number line, right? It is the distance away from the point zero that we're dealing with. So for example, the absolute value of negative four is four because negative four is four units away from zero. So negative four is here and four is here. The absolute value is just the number of units away we are from zero. So in this equation, the absolute value of x minus two equals five, this can be interpreted as two equations. One is that x minus two equals five, the other is that x minus two equals negative five. Because let's take a look at the number line. Let's put zero here, right? and we end up with these values of x equals 7 and x equals negative 3 because the equation is saying that x minus 2 should be either at negative 5 or at 5. And so if we're subtracting 2 from these values to get us x, we'll either move this direction or we'll move in the other direction. Right, we're actually adding, sorry. We'll move in the other direction. We're gonna add two to get seven, and in this situation, we're gonna add two to negative five to get negative three. So you can think in terms of a number line. When absolute values contain inequalities, consider what is inside the, the um, absolute value marks to be under slash over a certain distance from a midpoint. Um, so, taking a look at this example, the expression, the height of, an, of every basketball player falls within nine feet, sorry, nine inches from 78 inches. This means that the height minus 78 inches is less than nine, that the um, over under is, is less than nine. In other words, the distance from 78 inches is less than or equal to nine inches in some direction. Just to remind you that if you're in the OG, in the official guides, you can follow along on these pages. So let's take a look at an example question here. Actually, we're going to look at an example on these uh, next week because I want to talk about linear equations. We'll start next week with some absolute value questions and you'll be able to do some for homework as well and we'll cover a couple of examples at the beginning of class next week. I want to talk a little bit about linear equations with unknowns. Two linear equations with two unknowns can always be solved. Just make sure you're not dealing with one equation that just uh, is scaled up. So linear equations with one variable should be solved by isolating the variable on one side of the equal sign. Linear equations with two unknowns, we can handle them in a couple of ways, the substitution method or the combination method. In the substitution method, we isolate the variable in one equation. We isolate the variable you don't want to find, right? Uh, and then we substitute that in the resulting expression in the other equation. The other possibility is combining, where we simplify one equation so the coefficients of one variable match an absolute value, then we add or subtract the two equations by stacking them. And we'll look at some examples uh, over time as well of these types of questions. But like I said, I want to take a look at a linear equation example with you guys before class ends. So talking just a little bit more about linear equations, let's take a look at an example question here that we've written. Jason and Amanda together have 18 apples. If Amanda gives Jason four of her apples, then Jason will have five times as many apples as Amanda. How many apples did Amanda initially have? Here we have this nasty GMAT question that's written in English, but it's really a math question. We have to manage it as an information management challenge, uh, and how can we do that? So the first statement, Jason and Amanda together have 18 apples. So if we add all their apples, Jason's apples plus Amanda's apples, we'll get 18 apples. That's one equation. The other one tells us if Amanda gives Jason four of her apples. So we can see here that Amanda has lost four apples and Jason has gained four apples. They're saying that Jason will have five times as many as Amanda. So if Amanda loses four and Jason gains four, he'll have five times as many apples. 
And if we take this equation and simplify it, we can get it down to 5a minus j equals 24. Now we have two equations. Uh, we have, you know, if we put them in like terms, we have something along these lines. So negative j plus 5a equals 24. So in the substitution method, we solve for one variable and plug it into the other equation. So I could solve in this top equation and make it look like this, j equals 18 minus a. And then I take this whole value and I plug it in for j in this equation that we had over here. And it'll look something like this. So we have, now we have one equation with one unknown. We can just solve for a and a equals 7. In the other method, like I said, that we were stacking them, what we did is we, we actually have to you know, stack these so we can add them, but this is nice, j minus j, a plus 5a gives us 6a, 18 plus 24. We even wrote the little plus symbol there to remind ourselves, 18 plus 24 is 42. We solve for a and we get seven as well. So we're just gonna work one linear equation question together here, uh, and then I'll let folks go. Actually, we're gonna work this one at the beginning of next week, because I wanna go over your homework and let you guys go on time. Um, we're gonna do these as part of our review of the beginning of class on Saturday, and if I'm not mistaken, is Stacy joining us on Saturday? Uh, Stacy Blackman will be with us on Saturday as well to give you a half hour of our second lesson in the MBA admissions portion of our course. So let's go ahead and just wrap up class. So just to remind you, this course is entirely free to join us live. If you want to download or stream any of the episodes later, you can purchase them for $99. When the course ends, it's going to go up, so I'd recommend you do it now. For when we're working our homework, for questions we get wrong, we should be going over these four questions and having a notebook where we're keeping track of the questions we get wrong and asking ourselves and answering in English, why is the right answer right? Why did I think it was wrong? Why is the wrong answer wrong? And why did I think it was right? So homework for Grok at Standard members, do and review. It does not count if you just do it. That's only half of your homework. Even for the questions you get correct, it can be helpful to review them. You can leave comments for other students, which is helpful for you. That's correct. If you leave comments on questions that you already got correct and understand for other students, it will further your mastery of that information, which means the next time you're presented with it, you will answer it more quickly, uh, more effectively. So do the homework here and review the homework and go in and help other people with it because that's how I became a GMAT master and you can do the same thing. So I want you to work five absolute value questions. You can use these tags that, you'll, uh, that appear in the Create Your Own Games in Grokket. Five absolute value, five estimation questions, five inequality questions. Do all of these as separate little drills. Ten system of linear equation questions and five quadratic equation questions, and you have until Saturday to do that. If you haven't taken your second CAT test, we will be assigning that later, so don't worry, we'll be continuing those. But for now, this is your homework. Do it and review it. If you just do it, you only did half of it. Uh, other than that, thanks a lot for joining us. I uh, appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed the class. It should be up on the, um, to, to stream later if you purchase the course within 24 hours. Thanks again. If you have any questions, tweet me at Farbood. We'll see you on Saturday with Stacy Blackman. Have a great night.